Casey Hill. Um, I've been working at Red Lodge International Freestyle Ski Camp since the late 90s. It's an awesome place. It has some of the best steep late season terrain out there. Um, cliff drops, cornices, big park in the bottom. A lot of, a lot of fun. Around 2003, we had, um, well, Tanner Hall, he, he was a, pretty much a staple there for quite a few years in the, the late 90s, early 2000s. But we had Glenn Flake around for a while, um, All-Star Freeride. They were, um, they were at camp for quite a while. Sick. There's two T-bars and the bottom one's kind of flat that takes you up to the, the second one. The second one's just pretty much straight up and down for a couple hundred feet, 300 feet. And uh, yeah, man, just a lot of good skiing, a lot of good memories there. The camping, the, uh, everything that comes along with it. You know, growing up there skiing moguls, it was perfect because the line was super steep and really, you know, the rut line was super deep. and. It was just you know a lot gnarlier than any mobile course that you'd normally see, so for me it was perfect. And then just transitioning out of the bumps into kind of skiing more of the mountain and hitting jumps, I mean, that that place is crazy. Once you've seen the glacier and seen with a skier, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Red Lodge International's history goes way back, back to the opening of the Beartooth Pass, when uh, the camp was actually at one point located on Gardner Headwall. Uh, it found its permanent residency in the early 80s when they put the permanent lifts in on Twin Lakes Headwall. Um, since then, the lifts don't have to be put up every year, and so they just have to be dug out. Just arm that bad boy. 315 pound bags of Anfo with a PTNA booster and a shot cord with a blasting cap. You know, it's off the grid, it's Montana, you know what I mean? It's different, it's deep space, it's sick.